Hi Year 6 and welcome to Thursday's reading. And it's really good because we've only got two days left of reading until our half term. So actually we're going to want to try and finish this chapter before the end of half term. So we're going to read on today and we're going to actually find out how Bilbo might rescue his friends from the elven uh, palace. So how, how is he going to rescue his friends from the elves in Mirkwood? One day, nosing and wandering about, Bilbo discovered a very interesting thing. The great gates were not the only entrance to the caves. A stream flowed under part of the lowest regions of the palace and joined the forest river some way further to the east, beyond the steep slope out of which the main mouth opened. Where this underground watercourse came forth from the hillside, there was a water gate. There the rocky roof came down close to the surface of the stream and from its portcullis could be dropped right to the bed of the river to prevent anyone coming in or out that way. But the portcullis was open often, for a good deal of traffic went out and in by the water gate. If anyone had come in that way, he would have found himself in a dark rough tunnel, tunnel leading deep into the heart of the hill. But at one point where it passed under the caves, the roof had been cut away and covered with great oaken trap doors. These opened upwards into the king's cellars. There stood barrels, and barrels and barrels, for the wood elves, and especially their king, were very fond of wine, though no vines grew in those parts. The wine and other goods were bought from far away, from their kinsfolk in the south, or from the vineyards of men in distant lands. Hiding behind one of the largest barrels, Bilbo discovered the trap doors and their use, and lurking there, listened to the talk of the king's servants. He learned how the wine and other goods came up the rivers or over lake to the long lake. It seemed a town of men still throve there, built on bridges far into the water as a protection against enemies of all sorts, and especially against the dragon of the mountain. From Lake Town the barrels were brought up the forest river, Often they were just tied together like big rafts and poled or rolled rowed upstream. Sometimes they were loaded onto flatboats. When the barrels were empty, the elves cast them through the trapdoors, opened the water gate, and out the barrels floated on the stream, bobbing along until they were carried by the current to a place far down the river where the bank jutted out, near to the very eastern edge of Mirkwood. There they were collected and tied together and floated back to Lake Town, which still close to the point where the forest river flowed into the long lake. For some time Bilbo sat and thought about this water gate and wondered if it could be used for the escape of his friends and at last he had the desperate beginnings of a plan. The evening meal had been taken to the prisoners. The guards were tramping down the passages taking the torchlight with them and leaving everything in darkness. Then Bilbo heard the king's butler bidding the chief of guards good night. Now come with me he said and taste the new wine that's come in. I shall be hard at work tonight, clearing the cellars of the empty wood, so let us all drink first to help the labour. Very good, laughed the chief of the guards. I'll taste with you, and see if it's fit for the king's table. There is a feast tonight, and it would not do to send up poor stuff. When he heard this, Bilbo was all in a flutter, for he saw that luck was with him, and he had a chance at once to try his desperate plan. He followed the two elves until they entered a small cellar, and sat down at a table on which two large flagons were set. Soon they began to drink and laugh mer merrily. Luck of an unusual kind was with Bilbo then. It must be a potent wine to be, make a wood elf drowsy, but this wine, it would seem, was the heady vintage of the great gardens of Dorwinian, not meant for his soldiers or his servants, but for the king's feast only, and for smaller bowls, not for the butler's great flagons. Very soon the chief guard nodded his held, then he laid it on the table and fell fast asleep. The butler went on talking and laughing to himself for a while without seeming to notice, but soon his head too nodded to the table and he fell asleep and snored beside his friend. Then in crept the hobbit. Very soon the chief guard had no keys, but Bilbo was trotting as fast as he could along the passages towards the cells. The great bunch seemed very heavy to his arms and his heart was often in his mouth in spite of his ring he could not prevent the keys from making every now and then a loud clink and clank which put him all in a tremble. First he unlocked Barlin's door and locked it again carefully as soon as the dwarf was outside. Barlin was most surprised, as you can imagine, but glad as he was to get out of his wearisome little stone room, he wanted to stop and ask questions, 
and know what Bilbo was going to do and all about it. No time now, said the Hobbit. You must follow me. We must all keep together and not risk getting separated. All of us must escape or none, and this is our last chance. If this is found out, goodness knows where the king will put you next. With chains on your hands and feet too, I expect. Don't argue, there's a good villa. Then off he went from door to door, until his following had grown to twelve. None of them any too nimble, with it, what with it being dark, and what with their long imprisonment. Bilbo's heart th- harped, thumped every time one of them bumped into another, or grunted or whispered in the dark. Drap that dwarvish racket, he said to himself. But all went well, and they met no guards. As a matter of fact, there was a great autumn feast in the woods that night, and in the halls above. Nearly all the king's folk were merry-making. At last, after much blundering, they came to Thorin's dungeon, far down in a deep place, and fortunately not far from the cellars. Upon my word, said Thorin, when Bilbo wested him to come out and join his friends. Gandalf spoke true as usual. Pretty fine burglar you make, it seems, when the time comes. I'm sure we are all forever at your service, whatever happens after this. But what comes next? Bilbo saw that the time had come to explain his idea, as far as he could, but he did not feel at all sure how the dwarves would take it. His fears were quite justified, for they did not like it a bit and started grumbling loudly in spite of their danger. We shall be bruised and battered to pieces and drowned too for certain, they muttered. We thought you had some sensible notion when you managed to get hold of the keys. This is a mad idea. Very well, said Bilbo, very downcast and also very annoyed. Come along back to your nice cells and I'll lock you up again and you can sit there comfortably and think of a better plan but I don't suppose I shall ever get hold of the keys again, even if I feel inclined to try. That was too much for them, and they calmed down. In the end, of course, they had to do just what Bilbo suggested, because it was obviously impossible for them to try and find their way into the upper halls, or to fight their way out of the gates that closed by magic, and there was no good grumbling in the passages until they were caught again. So following the Hobbit, down into the lowest cellars they crept. They passed a door, through which the chief guard and the butler could still be seen happily snoring with smiles upon their faces. The wine of Dorian brings deep and pleasant dreams. There'd be no, there would be a different expression on the face of the chief guard the next day, even though Bilbo, before they went on, stole in and kindly heartedly put the keys back on his belt. That will save him some of the troubles in for, said Mr Baggins to himself. He wasn't a bad fellow and quite decent to the prisoners. It was a puzzle to them all too. They'll think we had a very strong magic to pass through all those locked doors and disappear. Disappear. We've got to be busy very quick if this is to happen. Barlam was told off to watch the guard and the butler and give warning if they stirred. The rest went into the adjoining cellar with the trap doors. There was little time to lose. Before long, as Bilbo knew, some elves were under orders to come down and help the butler get the empty barrels through the doors into the stream. There were, in fact, already standing in rows in the middle of the floor, waiting to be pushed off. Some of them were wine barrels, and these were not much use, as they could not easily be opened at the end without a deal of noise, nor could they be easily secured again. But among them were several others, which had been used for bringing other stuff, butter, apples, and all sorts of things, to the king's palace. They soon found thirteen with room enough for a dwarf inside. In fact, they were too roomy, and as they climbed in the dwarves, though anxiously of the shaking and the bumping, they would get inside. Though Bilbo did his best to find straw and other stuff, to pack them in as cosily as could as could be managed in a short time. At last twelve dwarves were stowed. Thorin had given a lot of trouble, and turned and twisted in his tub, and grumbled like a large dog in a small kennel, while Barlin, who came last, made a great fuss about his air holes, and said he was stifling, even before his lid was on. Bilbo had done what he could to get close holes in the side of the barrels and to fix on their lids as safely as could be managed. And now he was left alone again, rumbling round putting the finishing touches to the packing and hoping against hope that his plan would come off. It had not been done a bit too soon. Only a minute or two after Barlin's lid had been fitted on there came the sound of voices and the flicker of lights. A number of elves came laughing and talking into the cellars and singing snatchings of the song. They had left a merry feast in one of the halls and went on returning as soon as they could. Where's old Gallion, the butler, said one. I haven't seen him at the tables tonight. You ought to be here now to show us what's to be done. 
I shall be angry if the old slow coach is late, said another. I've no wish to waste time down here where the song is up. Ah, came a cry. Here's the old het villain with his head on a jug. He's been having a little feast all to himself and his friend the captain. Shake him, wake him, shouted the others impatiently. Gallion was not at all pleased at being shaken or waken, and still less at being laughed at. You're all late, he grumbled. Here I am waiting and waiting down here, while you fellows drink and make merry and forget your tasks. Small wonder if I fall asleep from weariness. Small wonder, said they, when the explanation stands close at hand in a jug. Come give us a taste of your sleeping draught before we fall too. No need to wake the turnkey turn yonder. He's had his share by the looks of it. Then they drank once round and became mightily merry all of a sudden. But they did not quite lose their wits. Save us, Gallion, cried some. You began your feasting early and muddled your wits. You have stacked some full casts here instead of the empty ones, if there is anything in wait. Get on with the work, growled the butler. There's nothing in the feeling of weight in an idle tosspot's arm. There are ones to go and no others. Do as I say. Very well, very well, they answered, rolling the barrels to the opening. On your head be it, if the king's full butter tubs and his best wine is pushed into the river for the late men to feast on for nothing. Roll, 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 rolling down the hole. Heave, ho, splash, plump, down they go, down they bank, bump. So they sang as first one barrel and then another rumbled to the dark opening and was pushed over into the cold water some feet below. Some were barrels really empty, some were tubs neatly packed with a dwarf each. But down they went, one after another, with many a clash and a bump, thudding on top of ones below, smacking into the water, jostling against the walls of the tunnel, knocking into one another and bobbing away down the current. It was just at this moment that Bilbo suddenly discovered the weak point in his plan. Most likely you saw it some time ago and have been laughing at him, but I don't suppose you'd have done half as well as yourself in this place. Of course he was not in a barrel himself, nor was there anyone to pack him in, even if there had been a chance. It looked as if he would certainly lose his friends this time. Nearly all of them had disappeared through the dark trap door and get utterly left behind and have to stay lurking as a permanent burglar in the elf caves forever. For even if he could have escaped through the upper gate at once, he had precious small chance of ever finding the doors again. He did not know the way by land to the place where the barrel was collected. He wondered what on earth would happen to them without, with him, without him, for he had no time to tell the dwarfs all that he had learned, or what he had meant to do, once they were out of the wood. While all these thoughts were passing through his mind, the elves began very merry, began to sing a song round the river door. Some had already gone to haul on the ropes while pu which pulled up the poor cullis at the water gate, so as he let the barrels as soon as they were all afloat below. Down the swift dark stream you go, back to land you once did know, leave the halls and caverns deep, leave the northern mountains steep, where the forest, wide and dim, stoops in shadow, grey and grim. Float beyond the world of trees, out into the whispering breeze. Past the rushes, past the reeds, past the marshes, waving weeds. Through the mist that riseth white, up from mere and pool at night. Follow, follow, stars that leap, up the heavens, cold and steep. Turn when dawn comes over land, over rapid, over sand. South away and south away. Seek the sunlight and the day. Back to pasture, back to mead, where the kine and oxen feed. Back to gardens on the hills, where the berry swells and fills. Under sunlight, under day, south away and south away. Down the swift dark stream you go, back to lands you once did know. Now the very last barrel was being rolled to the doors. In despair and not knowing what else he could do, Poor little Bowwill caught hold of it and was pushed over the edge with it. Down into the water he fell, splash, into the cold dark water with the barrel on top of him. He came up again spluttering and clinging to the wood like a rat, but for all the efforts he could not scramble on top. Every time he tried, the barrel rolled round and ducked him under again. It was really empty and floated light as a cork. Though his ears were full of water, he could hear the elves still singing in the cellar above. Then suddenly the trap doors fell to with a boom and their voices faded away. He was in the dark tunnel floating in icy water all alone, for you cannot count friends that are all packed up in barrels. Very soon a grey patch came in the darkness ahead. He heard the creak of the water gate being hauled up 
and he found that he was in the midst of a bobbing and bumping mass of casks and tubs, all pressing together to pass under the arch and get out into the open stream. He had, he had as much as he could do to prevent himself from being hustled and battered to bits, but at last the jostling crowd began to break off and swing off one by one under the stony arch and away. Then he saw it had been no good even if he had managed to get astride his barrel, for there was no room to spare, not even for a hobbit, between its top and suddenly stooping roof where the gate was. Out they went under the overhanging branches of the trees on either bank. Bilbo wondered what the dwarves were feeling and whether a lot of water was getting into their tubs. Some of those that bobbed along by him in the gloom were seen pretty low in the water and he guessed that these had the dwarves inside. And here we can see a picture of all the barrels going out of the gate and down the stream. So Bilbo managed to save them. And we're going to read on the end of the chapter tomorrow. Well done for reading along with me. And we'll find out how the dwarves fare in the river in the barrels.